I made tables a part of wrestling when Vince McMahon said I couldn't be. Were you fired in ECW? I chose New Japan over an ECW day. New Japan was major. ECW was only cute. Did Paul Heyman owe you money? Yes, he does. But okay. rumors about you is you filled your wound with super glue. I didn't fill it with super glue. I fixed it with super glue. Do you think WWE will ever acknowledge your contributions to wrestling and be put into the WWE Hall of Fame? A true artist isn't recognized until he's dead. I'll probably get in there more dead. What's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to 10 Count right here on Wrestling News Co. On today's edition, I'm talking to the man that I believe brought tables into North America, but we'll find out today. It's Sabu. How are you today? I'm pretty good. I'm away to New York today. Am I allowed to do the point too? Or is that a, is that? Of course. This is, of course, it's not trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I told I, I, I interviewed Rob Van Dam uh, last year, and I asked him, did you ever trademark this? And he's like, no, but I really wish I did. And I was like, oh, man, right. I was like, we could have we could have all been That's making millions nice. of dollars. And of yeah. course, yeah, this interview is sponsored by Podstars, where you can go to Podstars right now and you can get hooked up with so many different professional wrestlers like Sabu, Devon Dudley. Then, of course, if you want to talk to UFO experts, MLB empires, there is so much on Podstars. So if you want to talk to your favorites from all aspects of sports entertainment, in sports, and just in general, podstars.com is a place to go. So that's what's sponsoring this episode, and today we are graced with the presence of Sabu, one of my favorites of all time. This Thank man you. has done everything, and today we're going to debunk some, some Sabu myths, I think. And one of them is, are you the person and the man who gets the credit for bringing and, I guess, utilizing tables in North America? Um, get the credit? I would say no, but yes, I did. Wow. No, I, I made tables a part of wrestling when my, Vince McMahon said I couldn't be. It was too, too far-fetched from wrestling. And and then five years later, I see him carrying a table to the ring in a table match. No. Right. So that, that was... <laughs> so uh, it was it was a foreign object until I brought it around, I guess. Now it's a, and then, a common and object. <laughs> Yeah, because then you bring kind of bring it up a little bit was in the WWE, it was randomly used very randomly, like once or twice in like 10 years. And then the Dudley boys showed up and they were obviously from ECW first. But, but, but if you didn't watch the, ECW, hold on, then hold you on. didn't they, know. When, when they used the table back then, it was a power driver, a body slam or something s simple. Yeah, I was the one that put used a part of my match, part of my my strategy and put a guy through a table, not just throw him, but put him through right. it with myself, you know? Of course. So, uh, I, do, do, I, do I like the way it evolved? No, it evolved to a prop now. Now there's a stack of tables in the ring, and it's not a, a surprise. It's not, you know, it's it's a, a everyday gimmick now. True. True. I don't know if you asked me that, but <laughs> no. But that, I'm, 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 no. I'm good to hear how, how passionate you are about this because, like I said, the Dully Boys in the WWE made it seem like they brought in tables and they invented tables to the WWE audience. If you weren't watching ECW, you didn't know about everything else. Well, then you wouldn't know the history of you in Sabu and how pretty much the Attitude Era is ECW just with a budget. So in reality. A lot of things that you did don't get the credit it deserves, I think, because it wasn't in a, a stage where it was on cable. If you watch ECW, and where I lived, it was on the Spanish channel at 1 in the morning on Friday nights. All right? <laughs> <the> Spanish channel. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so, her sand watch that. Uh, I was up watching it 1 in the morning. So, you know. Eh. But it, it's good to hear that... You're the one who brought it in because I wanted to clarify that here today because that was no. one of the main things I wanted everyone to know. But but I wasn't the first to ever use it. I was the first to part of my Populated. strategy repertoire. Yeah. Yeah. You you made it a thing, like a popular item. Obviously, yeah. you know, like for instance, when I think of like William Regal, I think of Brass Knox. Obviously, he wasn't the first person to use brass right, buckles, right. but you right. populated it. You made it something that it was on my the uncle, street. My uncle used it before I did. My uncle used it before I did. And Randy Savage used it before I did. It's been done before, but not the way I did. 
Right. Of course. Of course. Sorry. It's all good. Trust me. We've had dogs. <laughs> we've had cats. Uh, someone did one in a barn once with an interview. So trust me, I've had wild animals in all my interviews. So a dog barking is the least of my worries. Though, <laughs> you know, in ECW, <laughs> it seemed like you were part of the original group. Then you <laughs> left, then you came back eventually. And but let's debunk some myths. Were you fired by Paul Heyman in ECW to go work a different event? Um, yes and no. Uh, I chose uh, New Japan over an ECW date because it was six times the pay. And I figured that I'd miss that show. And I told him ahead of time, I'd miss the show, but I'll make up for it. He said, no, you do that, you're fired. I said, okay. So I didn't think he'd really fire me, but he did. And the way he did it, I quit the way he fired me. You know, even if he wasn't firing me, I won't quit anyways the way he said it. But, uh, yeah, he Florida fired me. Interesting. Because of getting more money in your pocket? Yes. Right. ECW wasn't my lifeline. Japan was. Uh, and and it was, he wanted me to choose between a, my, a, you know, a minor payoff from him from them to a major payoff from the from Japan. It's hard to say no when you're when you're hungry. I'm not starving food hungry, hungry for success, hungry for more, you know. That's true too. You know, yeah, because that I... was fine. It was cute at the time. It wasn't major. New Japan was major. It was true. ECW it was only cute. It was a glorified independent and, and but my heart's there. Because, yeah, that was, like, really the beginning, I think, of at least the North American audience discovering, you know, the Sab Sabu and, and Sandman and other yeah, characters like that. Hold on that. one second. Hold on one second. Shortly after I, I left and came back, guess who left? Benoit Guerrero. All those fucking two-faced. And why do you Bob, think they left, Bob, Malenko, though? Malenko, Malenko. They are motherfucking. Deep. But they did the same thing. New Japan and all Japan. Yeah. Uh, WCW. New Japan and WCW, they did the exact same thing because it was better for their, their life. Right. But why did that got motherfuckers? And why do you think that is, though? Uh, because they didn't ask them first. That's why. <laughs> they asked me first. Interesting. Because... Me that, actually, the plan was for me to come in with the three guys. And I said, no, I'm not the fourth midget. And they said, what do you mean? I said, those guys are junior heavyweights. They'll never make it past the first match. I was wrong. But that was my mentality that if you're a junior heavyweight, it's a kiss of death. You never make it to the main event. Liger never ruined the main event. Main event wrestler, but junior heavyweight. In the eyes of the J Japanese, you're not main event caliber. Well, I didn't like that feeling coming in with those guys. I wanted to come along and prove myself, which, you know, it shot my foot off, but so what? So you're telling me I that when it, Benoit in Milenko and when. When Benoit, Malenko, and Eddie Guerrero and all those other talents were coming over from ECW, ECW. they wanted you to be part of that group to go to yes. WCW? Yes. And you know, cruiserweight division. I said, cruiserweight? I don't want to be a cruiserweight. This is, this is too hard. I said, no, I want to be a heavyweight. Uh, who's Hogan wrestling? For, he goes, his opponent is, is picked for the next two years. I said, okay, Sting, his opponent is picked for the next two years. And I said, well, fuck it then. Now, and then Paul Heyman, <laughs> Paul and Todd came to me and said, we do a run-in because we're losing the building because they set it on fire the, the month before. Terry Funk and uh, Cactus Jack set it on fire the month before. So so the commission was going to kick them out unless they got me. So I came in for one night. The lights out, lights on, playing up. That wasn't a, a true jump. That was just an appearance. Nancy and everybody else told Kevin, and then that Kevin Sullivan, and, you know, that told Bischoff and all that shit. So they fired me, and I quit at the same time. I didn't want to be there anyways. Interesting. I've never heard I that did, part of that I story. Didn't, I didn't really jump to the ECW. I did an appearance because WCW was a paying shit, and they would not negotiate. They wouldn't budge. But you had a contract with WCW when you made an appearance uh, in ECW? No, I, I, I wouldn't sign it. I had a contract unsigned. I wouldn't sign it. Interesting. Cause you, yeah, you're only really there for a little while. Three months. Wow. Yeah, because the big moment for you is on for WCW is on you're on Nitro and you put I think yes. it's Alex Wright through a table and they I had a you fight win the like match. Hell. I had a like fight like hell. I had a fight like hell to get that in. 
I, I didn't want to get it in. I wanted a part of the match. And they said, no, it's too far-fetched. Then they hire a published enemy who, 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 who are ridiculous. You know, the, the way they did it was, was comedy. Look like it, the bushwhackers. Yeah, good old, good old bushwhackers licking people. You can't do that anymore, can you? No. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> if I was ever sitting in front of Rose and Charlie, like back away, back away, please yeah, do I'm... not lick my face ever. I don't yeah. know where your mouth's been. <laughs> you know who I knows? I never licked nobody. I never spit on nobody. I try not. Good, to. good, good to hear. Now let's talk about this for a second because eventually with WCW, like with Psychosis, with Mysterio, Hooven Two, all of them come over too. So is there like a do you, do you know if there's this this weird feeling in WCW of like let's just cripple ECW and steal a lot of their talent so they'll just go under or is WCW just like we're need talent we don't know where to get it oh there's a, we can get some over here uh I I didn't think they tried to cripple ECW on purpose but it did uh, I, and I didn't try to cripple WCW I didn't try to cripple anybody I tried to make living that's it yeah yeah uh, <laughs> and and, I, I, and those guys are under Conan's uh, supervision or guidance. So yep. they, they got him for a cut rate. Oh my. Also, uh, Conan, Conan got paid, but don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> did he, so did he get a cut of their uh, contracts? Uh, I'm sure he did. A signing bonus of some sort? No, he paid them. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. All right. Anyway, um, yeah. WCW yeah. got a steal when they got the Mexicans. Believe me. Wow. Interesting, because they didn't sell Red Mysterio masks either yeah. until they, they years, and years and years and years later. They had a steal when they got me, but I, I didn't go for it. Because you come over, uh, Mikey Whipwreck, Sandman, Public Enemy. Uh, there's a lot of people from ECW coming over into WCW, and I just feel like yeah, it was but, always weird. But, but I'm the only one that got motherfucking for it. From Paul Heyman. From everybody. Everybody that just loyal to ECW. Not just Paul, those guys and the fans. Now, why do you believe that? Because of uh, they think you were like the face of ECW. They so how could you do that? It wasn't their <laughs> life. They were an ass. You know what can I say? You know. Right, 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 right. I can't beat um, the world. I'll try. Hey, man, you do whatever you can. Do whatever you can. Uh, a lot of people made a living off my back. Believe me, uh, I'm not. I'm not that naive. Of course. And now, your time in WCW. Are you ever interacting with Hulk Hogan at all? No. He never said anything and, to and you. No. And when they had Sabu Chance, they died him down on TV. So they weren't louder than Hogan's. Especially in Chicago. My last match there. I did a Chicago one. And the people were going nuts for me the whole night. And barely for him. And they said, that's not a good thing. The, wow. the boy said that. The boy told me that. I said, fuck. I thought that would be a good thing. Uh, and it wasn't. They didn't offer me no more money. Uh, they, the, the contract was two, two dates a month. A thousand a shot. What the fuck? Actually, that was your... not a thousand a shot. It was five hundred a shot. So I'd make a thousand dollars a month, and I can't take independent bookings. And I go, well, the, the schedule's great, but the payoff is the shits. Let's talk. And Bischoff said, take it or leave it. We don't have. What well, people think we have money, we don't. And I was thinking, I know you don't. Turner does. It's Turner's money we're talking about, not yours. But it was his budget. Yeah, it's come out uh, over the years because there was a lawsuit against WCW what each wrestler made. And yeah. I, I, I'm not disparaging anyone's names, but for instance, Macho Man's brother, who's passed away, Lenny Poffo, made $200,000 a year. Do you know how many matches he had in WCW? Uh -oh. Zero. Wow. Zero. Wow. And that's come out over the years, years ago when someone the lawsuit came out so the contracts were exposed and so you could see wow. what everyone was making. Wow. And so, you know, you hear that story and you're making $500 a pop off appearances. And they won't even give you independent dates. See how that came about was Kevin Sutherland called me and said, how much will it cost for you to do my first nitro or first nitro? I said, I can't in a book. He goes, how much for second nitro? I said, you don't have to pay me anything. Just put me over. It. We've got to pay you something. I said, okay, 500 bucks and we'll talk. He goes, okay, 500 bucks. Boom. And then Bischoff goes, you got what you wanted. I said, what did I want? 500 a shot. I said, no, 500 for that one nitro. Then we talk. And he would not budge. So I, I no showed him. And wow. Showed up for ECW, but not on purpose. I showed up for ECW because they offered me a, a lot more money than $500. 
Right. So the comparisons of making that, no, you know, I there's a book out there that has what Paul Heyman owed people eventually when ECW closed. So you're obviously getting paid more than you're getting paid in WCW, which is a, probably a myth to some people. So did Paul Heyman owe you money when the ECW finally was over? Yeah. Yes. Uh, but, but yes, he does. But uh, fuck it. You know, uh, it, the ECW didn't generate money. It, 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 it bled money. I understood that. But, uh, you know, uh, you can only go on so long with that, you know. So that's why I tried to jump to uh, WCW that time because Kevin and uh, JJ called me and said, come on in for a secret meeting, and I did. And uh, I had a contract set, almost set, and I said, I'll, I'll take it to my hotel rooms and read it. And Kevin goes, read it, just sign it. It was a, a, a lot of money. And I said, no, I, I want to read it. But what we really wanted to do was tell my mother first. But when I called my mother, she had a heart attack before I could tell her over the phone. So I didn't sign it. So I went home. And uh, from the hospital, I called Kevin and said, uh, I, I, I faxed over that contract now. He goes, too late. We're already being sued. Holly already found out about it and uh, threatened to sue WCW. So they, they stopped all uh, commun communication with me. Wow. Yeah, and it was for more than... Uh, I could have been retired by now. So really, Paul Heyman calling up so, WCW. Yeah, but I, I don't blame him for being pissed. But, but he took he actually took food out, not off my table. He took my fucking table. <laughs> right, right. Well, because I I've interviewed Todd Gordon a few times where Paul Heyman made up a fake person to buy ECW from Todd. And Todd's like, yeah, I like I like to meet this person. Paul's like, oh, he doesn't want to meet you though. He's like, no, but I'll, if I'm gonna sell my company, I gotta know who it is. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. The deal is he can't yes, meet yes. you. And, but that's and I'm, and I'm like, oh, okay. And so I eventually was like, so in your book though, Todd, it says it's a fake person. It's not even Vince. It's not Eric. It's Paul Heyman is buying this company from you, but he won't tell you this. He's like, it's a fake person. It's a person like name like you know Jack Smith, Jack Smith, and so. You know, a fictional person, and I was in I was in shock when I read that in the book. So that's hearing funny. these stories, it's like yeah, mm, that's you funny. Know? I'm not shocked. That's funny. <laughs> it's crazy when I read when I read that, read that book. I was like, oh my lord, this can't be real. But it is. Time, he told me one time the plane crashed with all the checks in it, so we didn't get paid that time. <laughs> and so what about the cash that was in there too? <laughs> Oh, the the gold bonds! Oh, the gold bonds were there too. All oh, the gold, bro, that's everything, like, the silver, so the gold. That's so funny. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer. <laughs> oh my lord, dude! I can't believe that. You know, I, I again, I've heard so many Paul Heyman stories from so many different people. Oh, but fuck. let's, the, it, it's endless. We could be here endless talking about Paul Heyman. We're talking here talking about you though. And this is one of those moments. I've seen the videos. <laughs> I have seen the pictures, and I still want to hear your feelings about this. So, you're in a no rope barbed wire match against Terry Funk, the ECW championship. There's no ropes. The ropes are barbed yeah. wire. Towards the end, you and Terry are so tangled up in barbed wire that they have to stop the match and cut you out. Tell me through that experience of being wrapped in barbed wire and you're just stuck. Like, you're there. You can't get out, man. Like, what's that experience like? Uh, Well, it, it sucked because I cared for Terry Funk, so I didn't want to hurt him. I actually got out. I would have hurt him, though. You know, hurt man, hurt myself bad, but that that was uh, wasn't supposed to be the finish. Uh, that was a one, two, three. I he couldn't kick out, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. I, I didn't. I could have probably got out forcefully, but if I did, it would have hurt him more. Wow, it, it the images are just grotesque to see you all wrapped up in my, barbed wire. My, my early barbed wire matches, I used to fall into it and rip myself out of it and let gashes on me. Then I figured out it's not so wild at it. And one of these holes, you know, and scratches. And, and scratches hurt, but they don't, they're not as bad as fucking gashes. Right. And so in this match, though, you have, if I'm correct, a 10-inch gash open up. And you actually close this with tape. And Bill Alfonso said this is one of the most disturbing things he's ever seen in his life. So just tell me, tell me how that works out. I don't out. believe that. I don't believe that. This is I, this is what the internet tells me. When I, so, how is that? Because I've heard many rumors about you as well. As you have filled your wounds with super glue. Are these stories true? 
Uh, yes and no. I, I didn't fill it with super glue. I fixed it with super glue. I use a super glue as a stitch. It's, it's common now. And uh, I, yeah, I, I have a 10 inch gash where I uh, taped up my arm in the ring during the match. Yeah. But I had it but, sewn up later in the dressing room. So you have gotten stitches though, because it's it, from stories yeah. and myth, it's you have filled your wounds with glue and never went to the hospital. No, the, the one in my arm was too much. Uh, I had 150 stitches put in. Uh, uh, I tried gluing it to sort home. But the, almost every other one, I put uh, glue to hold it and, uh, and somewhat hold, held it. <laughs> and uh, it, glue and tape are, are necessity. So these, so all the stories of Sabu closing all of his wounds with glue are true. No, about ninety nine percent of them with glue. All of them with glue, no. And not, the, not <laughs> just the, the just the one. The yeah, hospital. man. I went to the hospital once <laughs> for the for well, yeah. Didn't you also? Didn't Chris Benoit also break your neck? Well, I broke my neck in a match with. He didn't break my neck. I don't give that much credit, right? I broke my neck in, during the match, yes. Because, yeah, I, I, in the documentary of Chris Benoit many years ago, they would show it, and that's where the nickname The Crippler came from because they would show him lift you in the sky and you landed on your yeah. neck. Yeah. I landed on the top of my head, and, uh, and, yeah, I fucked me up. I sold it for about 15, 20 years. Now I'm selling other injuries. <laughs> how do you? How do you feel currently? At this very moment, not so good, but I'm getting better. I was feeling worse a few months ago, a few years ago, like a few months ago. I'm feeling not that good right now, but it's getting better. So I when you bad, wake up I in the morning. Shoulder, well, I got a bad shoulder, a uh, broken back, and a bad knee. So it's three major injuries at the same time, so that kind of sucks. Usually it's one or two at a time, or you get paid. You know, when you get paid, it don't hurt as much. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, but still, man, you broke you having your neck broken, closing gashes with glue, taping up I, huge gashes, getting tied up in barbed neck, wire. I wrestled, when I broke my neck, I wrestled two weeks later in Japan for five week tour in Japan, four weeks for FMW, one week for New Japan with a broken neck. How does someone physically do that? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to recommend nothing. I, I just did it. I wouldn't recommend it because it was dangerous. Uh, it was, I could have been paralyzed in any night. But I, I refuse to think about that. I didn't think about it. So I never had a broken neck, though. Like, how, describe to me, I guess, like, are you like, able to, you're like, obviously walking around. Yeah, it's like electricity going through your arm. Like, I had constant electricity going from my, uh, my, my neck to my fingertips, constant. And then, now and then it would get hit my whole body. But mostly it was only in my arm, my, my neck and my arm. But when I wrestled, it didn't bother me that much. Afterwards, yeah, it was kind of my whole body was, was feeling weak and shit. It was hard to recoup. But I did because I was I had to. You know, my uncle was there. So you work those those dates in Japan with a broken neck. Do you yeah. eventually go to the doctors or are you just – your neck healed on its own by not – Doing well, anything. when I went to the doctor, the first when I went to got took an ambulance to the hospital from the arena, they were gonna fit me for a halo. And I was there already about six hours. And I grabbed my referee. I said, "Help me out of here." So we just left. And that's the last time I seen a doctor about my neck. Now uh, they, I had X-rays before with their X-rays. My shoulder, where they're saying, "I think you got a broken neck." And I said, "Nah, we're not talking about that. Fell on my shoulder." <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my. Uh, my, my shoulder is worse than my neck but uh, but only the pain is worse if my neck was complete like i i had a compressed spine spinal i didn't sever the spinal cord you know uh hayabusa severed the spinal cord i compressed it different you know luckily uh that kept me moving just painful he didn't have no pain he just couldn't move because I cried one time when I was talking to him. He goes, why are you crying? I said, because you're probably in pain. He goes, no, I'm not in pain. I feel nothing. I said, you don't feel nothing? He goes, I feel nothing. He goes, feel nothing when the neck You can't move. You can't feel nothing. And I said, I, I think I'd rather feel pain. 
Yeah. Anyways. Wow. I I I, I just can't but, believe that you didn't go to the doctors. With bro- you went. Well, you went to the doctors, but obviously, like they didn't do any surgery on you because you can break uh, your neck in different ways. Uh, I had suggestions where um, uh, they had the neck surgery, but when I finished wrestling, uh, but it don't bother me anymore. I'm used to it. Wow. You still well, living not, with pain. Yeah, but what what hurts the most right now is my back. And that came out of, the, I fell down at a supermarket. I slipped on some wet floor. Uh, they get no lawsuit out of there or nothing. I fell down, and haven't wrestled since. It was three, three or four years ago. Right uh, before the pandemic. Right well, I, pandemic. the most recent thing that I've seen you on was, this is months ago now, was on AEW. You showed yeah, up and you count. did a spot yeah. there. Yeah, that, that don't count. I didn't wrestle. I did one thing. And and I was hurting for that, but I'm not hurting as much as I was in that day. That's for sure. But um, ever since I fell down in that store three years ago, I haven't wrestled. Wow. Yeah, I, I I mean I could I could I could cheat and uh, have him take it easy on me or wrestle like my uncle whatever. I'm not gonna if I'm not a uh, close to 100. percent I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna embarrass myself or 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 the job. So let's talk about that AEW situation then, because who contacts who and how? Who's like, hey, can you do this spot? And you're like, well, I haven't wrestled in three years, but sure. Uh, Chris Jericho, uh, you know, he called me out uh, and said, hey, uh, what are you doing Wednesday? And I said nothing. And he goes, we got a spot for you. Boom, boom, boom. Can you make a Sunday? I said yes, I can. So then I called him back. So oh, I fucked up. I, I'm booked on Sunday. He goes, can you do both or cancel? I said yeah. And so I, I did both, but uh, he called me. Oh, man. Yeah, it was, it was so good to see moment. you. It was, it was just a spur of the moment. They were in Vegas, and they needed a surprise or something. I don't know. No. Yeah, no. It, it seemed like they were trying to angle you as like an enforcer-type character, and then you did a, you know, you right. the table a spot, and then from there you weren't involved any longer. So everyone was kind of like, wait, is he the referee or is he not the referee? And so <laughs> we, were, we were all very confused watching, going, I thought he was supposed to be in this match the whole time. Where would he go? <laughs> That uh, I I didn't yes uh, I didn't want people to think that and I thought the same thing but the, I read that I was gonna be in the match you know yes uh, okay I'm I, I was wondering that because yeah everyone saw that and we're like oh cool he's gonna be in the whole match and then then you weren't and we we're all kind of going well, what yeah. happened there yeah. what, what's, if I was in the what's whole going match, on that, I would have took it and so were you aware while in ECW that Paul Heyman was getting paid by the WWE to keep the doors open. Mm-hmm. No, I had no idea. And then in 2006, no. I went to the I went to one night stand 2006 and I was there in the crowd like 10th row when I had long hair, now it's all falling out, and you fought Rey Mysterio in a, in a badass World Heavyweight Championship match. But there's this spot on the outside where DDT happens on a table that's on the guardrail and the match just ends. And we're all going, "What the heck? Is someone hurt?" So did, was that spot made just to make sure that nobody looked like ECW didn't look better or the WWE looked better because eventually Rob Van Dam beats John Cena at the end of the night? Yeah, um, it was supposed to be a no contest some way, double count out, double knockout, double both can't continue. It was my idea for the spot for DDT through the table. You know, it looked like a double knockout and it's stiff. Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks pretty stuff. I remember sitting there going, uh, I don't think I don't know who's I don't know who's okay here. This looks bad. Yeah. And it and yeah, it just ended. But but they planned it for that. But then Vince said behind my back that I was too dangerous and he and my wrestling Mysterio. Oh. Like he acts like I can't change or come toe down, you know, that like it's a machine or I'm a machine can't can't listen to reason. Interesting he says that because eventually you do fight John Cena on a pay-per-view. And so if he doesn't trust you with Mysterio, why would he trust you with John Cena? Trust me, again, after that, I gave him a black eye, and he was pissed about that. Because, he, you know, I gave him a black eye on accident. He gave himself a black eye, I should say. <laughs> um. So was Vince upset with the black eye, or was Cena upset with the black eye? Uh, they, both, they both were. Hmm. Interesting, because yeah, but, you know, was uh, upset because he had to not do his movie for a month. Oh, well, and those, going uh, to, is it the makeup, you know, and he goes, they won't do it. 
Well, I'll, I'll to be honest, uh, John Cena does great movies now, but in, uh, in that, in that time frame, they weren't that great. So, um, he can be yeah, upset about his movies. Not my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's as uh, anyone always will say in anything, wrestling isn't ballet. And so black eyes happen, broken necks happen, uh, things like but that. The thing, so, is, the thing is, it is ballet. If you're not on the same page, if you're not dancing with each other, it, it's not good. No, it's a rough ballet. And ballet, they get uh, tore ligaments and, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, black eyes and shit on accident. Not when you rehearse the same thing over and over and over for years. We don't research, we rehearse it over and over for years. We rehearse it for one match, then the next. You know? So we have to change our, our ballet routine each time we wrestle, or we should. You know. But it is like ballet. You have to dance. It's a dance. If the guy can't dance, he ain't a wrestler, a pro wrestler. Now you can get a, a guy, you know, a, a great amateur wrestler, and a shitty w- worker, but that fucker can go, but he can't dance. Mm. So could John Cena Maybe. dance or no? Yes, he can dance. I think he can. Yeah, he got he he gets all my votes. He deserves his spot. Uh, anybody jealous of him? Anybody talk bad about him is probably jealous. I don't blame him. I don't blame him for being jealous. He's you know he's getting a lot. Yeah, no, he's he's. Part of Mount Rushmore for a lot of people. I'm waiting for him to pop up on on Vince's list. (laughs) We'll we'll find out about that because yeah, you know, you know, all the top guys, Vince pimped somebody to him. I wonder. That's an interesting thing. You aspect you say that because there is a lot of names in those in those NDAs in those that filing that came out uh, a few weeks ago now, maybe three weeks ago now is. Officer number one, like officer number two, and there's been a tour. And I'm not going to reveal names, but if you go online, you can see someone who took a tour of WWE headquarters, and they show you doors, and it says officer one in the real name, officer two, real name. So if you just do enough research, you can figure out who knows and who's involved. Right. It's all there. It, unfortunately, yeah. it's all there, and that's going to put a big old black eye on uh, I guess maybe even professional wrestling in general because you know, he... uh, Vince is a scumbag. I knew that, but but he made a lot of guys rich. Yeah, I give him credit for that. But but uh, he's a scumbag. So Johnny 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 Ace. I yeah, I've Johnny never Ace. heard a good story. I've never heard a good story about John Lawrence uh, from people I've interviewed. Me me either. So what was your bad experience with John Laurinaitis then because I've heard some interesting ones that probably are just I toured with him in Japan he was a tattletale in Japan and and the, he, when he, he was uh, the what do you call I, he has something to do with the head of talent relations yes, yeah. yes yes talent relations so he kind of would yell at me like Terry blah, blah, blah. Like, what and he go Sabu like what's the problem because you know I was on like called oh, Terry and when he's mad, he wanted to show me his man. I said, if you, you say that again in front of somebody, it's a problem. So anyways, I don't like him besides there's some personal things. But but I, I knew he was a scumbag. Back in Japan, he was a scumbag. Uh, yeah, I've, I like Earl Hebner, for instance. I interviewed Earl Hebner, and I asked him, well, the rumor is you got fired because you were stealing merchandise and selling it. To me, that's crazy because you're the main referee. Why would you do that? And he goes, the real story is... John Laurinaitis did like my brother, so he set up a scenario where it looked like we did something bad, and we got fired for it. And we and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, wow. and then you hear more C- stories about from C.W. Anderson sharing me stories about his time in the WWE ECW. Uh, Chase Stevens, one of the half of the Naturals, like, is an endless list of people I've interviewed who share a John Laurinaitis story. We're like, "These are awful. These aren't these aren't normal wear and tear of oh, we don't like you as a boss. This guy is doing things on purpose." Yes. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in the wrestling world. Um, though, what were your thoughts on the WWE bringing back ECW? Because Rob Van Dam told me he's convinced that Vince McMahon brought it back just to kill it. Uh, uh I didn't have a, a, I didn't carry the way other than it was a payday. You know, I was good to have a payday, but uh, I knew it wasn't going to be uh worth a shit. You know, and it wasn't. It was WWE with the different letters, you know. 
did you think it was going to be like ECW or no? The original? No, no. Yeah. When I, at first I, I wanted to try. Yeah. But, uh, they wouldn't let me break a table when I wanted. They wouldn't let me do own spots. They said, uh, someone else does those spots. I said, I remember those spots. And they said, I hear you didn't. And each night I get scolded by somebody for stepping on somebody's toes, which I, I, they, they stuff on my toes, you know. I recall in Boston you fought Big Show, SummerSlam 2000, I want to say six, and I was there in the crowd, and they, they, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, this is Sabu's night, it's Sabu's night, and the Big Show just, I, it just slammed me through a table and beat you, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, like, nobody uh, who watches cool. ECW wants Big Show as your champion. They want the ECW wrestlers to be your champion. You know how fucked up that was. The next time I was supposed to beat him, he didn't show up, and they just let it go. You were supposed to beat him for the championship? Yes. Well, beat him. Beat him. Because he beat me 100 times. I said, I got to beat him one time. He said, yeah, next time. That was uh, the last time I wrestled him, and the next time I was supposed to wrestle him, he didn't show up. And they said, oh, well, he's not here. Uh, I said, but, you know, uh, what about the angle? And they said, there is no angle. He ain't here or Different match. Damn. Yeah. Well, because uh, Paul Heyman got fired about that time. Oh, you know, okay. When he was in the office, it was pretty good. Dusty Rhodes said, I said to Dusty, hey, why am I getting shit on here? Shit, shit on here. And he said, I had no friends in the booking meeting. I go, what the fuck's that mean? You should have somebody bring your name up in the booking meeting. I said, I don't have any friends in the booking meeting. He goes, no. And he walks away. He says, they have no friends in the booking meeting, baby. So why couldn't away. Dusty, I guess, why couldn't Dusty Rhodes put in a good word for you then? Um, like he said, he wasn't, he wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't my friend, I guess. I, I didn't, I, I didn't think I had to be, be somebody's friend to, to have a job. No. Politics. I, I see that now. I didn't know that then. I thought I could overcome it, but I couldn't, you know, Paul Lee was there. He knew what worked for ECW. So he brought my name up. He didn't. We didn't like each other, uh, but he he knew what was good and what wasn't uh, for ECW, anyways. And uh, uh, when he got fired, my name never got brought up, only to uh, get nailed in the coffin. You know, get, get beat. So so let's bring up a story that it doesn't really land on you hard, but it landed on Rob, where Rob Van Dam was ECW and WWE champion. You, you both get pulled over. And then Rob loses all the championships in a week, and you got a fine. Do you believe that moment when you guys were pulled over to having things in your car you weren't supposed to have that that really put like a target on your back more than ever? Uh, uh, I don't know. We had a target, anyways. You know, we're 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 at the Shawn Michaels clip, you know, uh, or the Triple H guys, you know, uh. We had a tar- he had a target anyways, but but Vince liked him more than he liked me. He liked me. Vince you said he liked me, but um, I didn't like him. <laughs> they said I should have, I didn't have a personal relationship with him. I didn't want one. Uh, that's gross. You know, a, I don't have to have a personal relationship with my boss. If I fuck up in the match, yeah, talk to me. If I don't, leave me the fuck alone. Right, right. So you did have a relationship thought, with Vince McMahon? I thought they hired... Hold on, I'm sorry. I thought yes, they sorry. hired me for Sabu, the 20-year veteran, not Sabu, the the body. You know, True. Uh, I, I had 20 years under my belt at that point. Uh, well, I'm an expert at, at that point. I'm a black belt at pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And they weren't treating me like that. They go, yeah, not I here. I go, I invented yeah. that. I hear you then. So well, you got that from me, not here. And that's unfortunate too, because so let's talk about your WrestleMania match. It seemed like it was going to be. They kept bringing up the originals versus the new breed, and it feels like this match is just booked. And everyone's so excited, and we're thinking it's going to be Extreme Rules. Well, that was until Tuesday. Then a couple days later, WrestleMania, it felt like your match started, then it started. It felt like it ended. Was that match yeah. supposed to be longer? No, it, it was what went as planned, but not to my. Not to my liking. I, I wanted me and me and Rob, me and RVD against somebody, against two guys, or me versus Rob. 
Uh, anything other, I was mad. And I was mad because we had a four-way, eight-way, we were going to call it. You know, Sandman and Dreamer. And then we had a the, the new brief. It was just on the show. It wasn't a spotlight. I thought I should have. I wanted me and Rob, one-on-one, or me and Rob as a tag team. No, no, no uh, accessories. Yeah, you and Rob and ECW were an incredible tag team. And, and obviously rivals, yeah, too. It was the oil and water thing. You know, was, uh, and uh, with Sandman and Dreamer, we looked typical. Nothing against those guys, but we looked typical, I thought. All right. And so two days later, you have a badass match on ECW on the Sci Fi channel where it's extreme rules and weapons and, and everything that we thought we were going to get at WrestleMania happens on a Tuesday. But listen, let's be honest WrestleMania versus a regular show. People are going to watch WrestleMania over a regular show if they're not tuning in already. So, like, wouldn't you think you'd want it to be great? Yeah, but maybe they're think, worried about you stealing the spotlight. Uh, I'm not going to say that, but but uh, I wondered that too. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. We had a killer match the next day, and it didn't mean shit, though. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, but the I think one of the people I always attach to you is Taz, and... Heading into like the first ECW pay per view in '97, the rivalry is continuing on for like two years. You guys didn't have a, have this battle until the pay per view finally happened, and then you're on Raw. You're jumping off the giant Monday Night Raw uh, sign on Taz, Team Taz. Like, there's so much building to this. How is that? Because that's your first feeling of we're on ECW, we're on pay per view. I'm fighting Taz. People, we, you, you and Taz sold this event. Other matches are on there, of course. But this rivalry was the selling point. How did you get along with Taz? Because for years I've heard there was no friendship there. Uh, there was no friendship uh, outside the ring uh, before that match. No, before. there was. There was none be- a little bit before and none after. And then None recently, after? Yeah, not until uh, uh, the new ECW. <laughs> So why? What happened after? This was never he's never my kind of guy, you know. He criticized me. I criticized him. <laughs> okay. And then you know? I guess that helps so that's rivalry on TV if people are yeah, thinking well, you guys we had a real, like. We had a real dislike. I didn't hate. I didn't want him to die. But I didn't like him. You know, I, I like him now. Uh, he he he. <laughs> he don't wrestle now. He's not competitive. Right. Yeah. He's not bother. Yeah. He's not bothering anymore if he's uh if he can't wrestle. Um. But in a documentary, Taz did say he was that he would joke with you that you fell off the big Monday Night Raw sign. Was that yeah. is that a true story? That's true. I, I fell instead of jump. When I tried to jump, the the, the letter moved. I was standing on it before I could jump off like this. It moved, so I fell straight down. And, and Those things were tethered. There, there was five guys. Yeah, it was tethered. Dudley's. I had him holding it, holding the ladder, <laughs> so it wouldn't fall over, but it still fell over. But I was supposed to hit land on five guys. I missed them all. I hit one guy with my forearm, but they all fell down like dominoes. And I got yeah, up from... and the wind was knocked out. About <laughs> I was shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> and Patterson said to me, you want to rehearse it? I go, rehearse it. I'm a pro. Rehearse it. So what did I got Patterson say to you after that? <laughs> Nothing. Nobody's <laughs> saying that's what you wanted. <laughs> It looked good on camera because you can't tell yeah, you from the see distance. It on camera. I just yeah. did a belly smacker and didn't sell it. I did a belly flop. Oh my I god. I wanted to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> and no, you it... If you look closely, behind the R is Bubba and Dud and Devon holding the ladder for me to climb up the R. Wow, I've never seen that that yeah, picture. If you pay before. attention right behind the R, you'll see one of them wearing a white jacket. That's that's Devon. Oh my god. A white, long uh... leather coat. I was going to say, because I remember as a child being in a, a mall once and ECW wrestlers were suddenly walking around. The only reason I knew that is because they all had leather jackets with ECW on the back. Oh. And I was like, damn. I was like, these look. And so uh, years later, I interviewed Bubba Ray Dudley and I asked him about that. And he's like, yeah, we did have those jackets. Like, yeah. is that, was, did you have one of those jackets too or no? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah? yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, that's, uh... Guess who made them? The Taz, Taz made it. <laughs> Taz, oh. <laughs> did all the t- Taz did all the t-shirts. He did all the t-shirt designs and shit. 
Were you happy with your designs? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's about homicidal, homicidal. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't care. I let it go. When people think I, I spelled it, I didn't spell it. I can't spell it anyways. <laughs> I wouldn't even oh try it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My first teacher of ECW is Bacon Black, and uh, I, I look fat, and the back says homos ho ho homocidal, not homicidal. <laughs> I guess many wrestling fans don't know how to spell because I don't think I've ever heard that story of. Did you know what's on the back of Sabu's shirt? You, you know, yeah, I I get ripped for it today for it. Still, oh, you still get it? Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, dude! I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh my god. I only made about three hundred of those shirts. I wouldn't let them make no more. <laughs> oh man! So if someone has one of those shirts, it's worth money. I guess so. My sister's got one. <laughs> I would check on eBay. <laughs> or one of those, you know, conventions that sell t shirts like that as well. Cause I, I you know, there's many shirts like them. that. I'll uh, buy them just to burn it. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> Fine. Well, I know you'll be eventually, I think, uh New England Fan Fest. You're gonna be at a lot of yes. different events coming up as well. Uh, so I do, uh, I do a podcast every Tuesday on Twitch, uh, a Twitch podcast. Oh, what's the link? Uh, man, uh, what are you, are you talking sure about current events? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it's called Samu Speech or something like that. Uh, Twitch, whatever. And so are that. you talking Are you talking about wrestling? Yeah, it's only wrestling. So you keep up with today's, uh, every everything that's going on in professional no, wrestling? No, we're talking about, about my wrestling. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah, yeah Certain yeah. things, you know, I, I, I don't watch everything. I don't watch mostly anything, really. And why is that? I don't know. It's everything's staged and it's too much. And these guys don't know what it took to be a, to really be a wrestler, you know. Uh, but it's in a night business, you know. So instead of criticizing, I just don't watch. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. And because like obviously, different has changed now. We're like, look, we'll, we'll use yeah, me yeah, for an yeah. example. It, I had a guy say, "I got this gimmick and that gimmick." I go, "Gimmick? I, I had no idea of a gimmick when I." Before I started, there was no idea. My uncle named me this. I, I didn't name myself that. Even if I wanted to do something different, he would have still named me this. And I would have had to take it. I would have had to do it. And I did. I was Terry Snuka for a couple of years, which I hated it. But but that's what he called me. So you're supposed to be Jimmy Snuka's brother? Cousin. <laughs> cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know the age. But one time, my cousin, my cousin Eddie is doing the ring announcing and I'm in the ring with, with somebody and they go, we have a treat tonight. Jimmy's super fly snook. His brother's here tonight. And I go, wow, really? Terry, Terry, super fly snook. I go, what? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I, I'm, I'm snooker. Oh, okay. <laughs> I go, what? <laughs> he goes, let's go with it. I go, fuck. And that was my name for about, about a year. I, mean, I couldn't lose it. Did you have to do but, the superfly but, but and the, I, the splash? No, I didn't do that. But but I did similar. I did my own shit. But 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 uh, I took it because I was told I had to take it. You know, take it. Uh, uh, I was going to grow through it. You know. Uh, yeah. No. When I was first started, my name was Terry Sr. I don't know what the Sr means. It doesn't matter because my uncle said it doesn't matter. No one's going to know about your first five years. You know, it'll take you five years until you're. You're a veteran, so don't even know about these five years. And back then, there was no videotapes. Starting out videotapes, you know. Right. Now, it's common. You can't lie or mislead or or, or, or have a, a, a wrong fact about anything because it's all recorded. Everything is recorded now. Yeah. You know, you say, I, I had 10,000 people and whatever, and you see it was 100, you know, because there was no research. Now everything you can research. This is true. But this but this is true. Back then, back when I started, there was no research, so no one's gonna remember my first five years. And I thought they wouldn't. <laughs> but it's coming back to help me. Now I, <laughs> I wanna know what SR stands for. Everybody's gotta start somewhere. SR, I have no idea. It could be Sheik's relative or Sheik's revenge or or um, I have no idea. Or su I heard super race. Malcolm used to say super race because Arabs are super race. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. 
but but he he said it laughing. He never told told me what it was. Never told anybody else. Because uh, anybody else who would ask him did say mind your own business. I only asked wow. him, "What's that mean? Shut the fuck up." Never asked him again. Anybody yeah. else? Says, hey, what does SR mean? None of your business. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, because yeah, in, in today's and, world I, now, like they bring in the WWE brings in like. They go find NFL players. They go find basketball players. They find college collegiate athletes and go, hey, you're really athletic. How about we train you how to be a professional wrestler versus your experience? Completely different. Yeah. Uh, I had to earn I had to earn to learn. Uh, I, I had to set the ring up every day and tear it down every night for seven months before he would train me. And I didn't know why. And I didn't ask him because he told me don't ask me. So and, and I, I and he's my uncle. I knew he wouldn't uh, steer me wrong. So uh, I proved that to him. So th th that's when he started teaching me to wrestle. Uh, it took me seven months to, to earn the respect to learn. Interesting. Wow, and man, you, you're 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 a journeyman. You've you seems like you've done it all. Now, you've now, guys, too. Can, now guys can pay three thousand dollars and they're a wrestler, good or not. Now now they can have tryouts. And they have a big body, good or not. I've gone you know, to one of these trials. Now, now it's not even about good body. I see skinny assholes, sorry, skinny guys uh, in there who shouldn't be there but can do all the shit. To me, that kills it for me. I want to see somebody who uh, looks like you're prepared for this fight, you know? Do you do you think it's a look though? Like a, like for instance, like yeah. you know, you, you hear stories about like these guys are coming in, so they all have they all look ha have muscles and abs, and they can no, no, run. No, abs don't mean fuck, but everybody should have muscles. Abs don't mean shit. That, that's, okay, yeah, that's a pretty man thing. I don't give a fuck about abs. Everybody should look like they're strong, even if they're not. You know, so because so, it's 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 an illusion what we're doing. The, the illusion the guy is skinny and can do all the moves. And it means the the, the audience can do it. The audience is like, I can do that. I'm not going to buy a ticket for something I can do. I'm going to buy a ticket for something I can't do. Sing, right. dance, whatever. Right. And you bring up, you brought up cameras too, how everyone can, you know, no one can see your first five years. Now I can go and find anybody who's training videos on YouTube or anywhere. Or if they got in trouble, it's going to be in the news. We all see it. And then Twitter does its thing. And then suddenly that person's out of the company. With you and ECW, for example, I had to tape trade to even watch some of those special events like Holiday Bash or, or all, all these weird names, things. I couldn't find them because like they didn't exist. I had to go find a tape trading website and dedicate myself into trading something else I had to see you, say, fight Cactus Jack or you fight Terry Funk or Shane Douglas or whoever. Like We didn't know there was drug use in the ECW locker room because there was no way to find that shit out. <laughs> there really wasn't that much drug use. It, it well, was, was I've heard stories. Forbidden. It was forbidden. It wasn't forbidden. Oh, it wasn't forbidden. Yeah, because um, it wasn't that much use, but it wasn't forbidden. Todd Gordon told me once that he said if oh, you Lord. passed it, if you passed a drug test, you weren't part of our family. <laughs> okay, if that came from Todd, I agree. <laughs> yes, yes. So trust me, anything you say, Sabu, I've heard from somebody else. So uh, you know, if you come up negative, you're not welcome. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much what it was like. Uh, I've heard story, many, many different stories. And in his book, he, he shares many stories about all the aspects of ECW. I'm not going to give away all the good stories, but if you want to check out his book, it's out there. It's incredible. <laughs> but is sad, but you've done so much. And the, the common question I like to ask people at the end is, do you think that the WWE will ever acknowledge your contribu uh, contribution to the wrestling world and be put into, say, the WWE Hall of Fame? Well, I think probably eventually, you know, <clears throat> a true artist isn't recognized until he is dead. Like Rembrandt, those guys, nobody gave a fuck about them alive. When they died, they came very well, you know. So I'll probably get in there when I'm dead, yeah. So well, I'm trying to get I... there. <laughs> I'm trying to stay out of it. <laughs> yes, yes. I was gonna say you just ain't trying to get in it. Please, please, Sabu. We we love you. We but, we but, love but your that body. Two work. artists is recognized until they're gone. Until you miss what you're doing. Say, yeah. Damn, he was truly good. Now we can't see him no more. Now he's the best because only can you know. Well, Anyways. I'll tell you now. I'll tell you now. You are one of the best. So no matter what, if you get put in the Hall of Fame when you're dead, get put in the Hall of Fame when you're alive. 
<laughs> you know, you're you're a Hall of Famer in my heart, Sabu. Well, I right? died once. It didn't. I died once. It didn't work. <laughs> you died once. I died a couple times. Anyways, thank you a very much. A couple times. You didn't hear. No. Anyways, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to, you know, uh, do a match, and the night before I got in early and. and uh, Overdid the party and didn't wake up, and they called an ambulance. And they took me to the ambulance and said I was dead, and then uh, let me go when I was alive. <laughs> you didn't hear about that? No, you just uh, you type, you about, type uh, your name in. You type your name in. That doesn't about, pop up. It was, I think, 2011, 2012, something like that. It so Extreme Rising was the company I was supposed to wrestle for, and they thought you were dead. Well, um, <clears throat> I had a bunch of guys in my room, in and out of my room, partying. I was partying also. And they said uh, I wasn't responsive in the morning. Be but I said, I'm not doing the autograph sign in the morning, so don't come. But they came anyways. So I barricaded the door and took some pills. So when they broke open the door, I was pilled up. Oh, you fucking OD and called the ambulance. They called the ambulance. I was an old and I was just jamming. And, but, they, but they wouldn't let me go in time for the match. So they, they said I was dead, but I, I wasn't. I mean, didn't feel like it. <laughs> I was <God>. jamming. <laughs> wow. In 2011, you almost got put in the Hall of Fame while being dead. And now yeah. but we'll have to wait until <laughs> you're 110. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well Sabu it is an honor talking about the past the present the future uh, again uh, you have a podcast on Twitch check that out folks because just me sitting here chit chatting with Sabu for a little while I can imagine what you're going to say on your own show weekly on Twitch so it has been an honor and a privilege talking to you today and of course like we started off the show with this episode is sponsored by Podstars so if you want to talk to Sabu Bill Alfonso, Devon Dudley, Buff Bagwell, Victoria. There's so many wrestlers on podstars.com. Like I said up the top, you can also talk to MLB empires, uh, UFO experts, actors, actresses, singers. There's so many people on podstars. So if you haven't checked them out, well, you need to right now and get an opportunity to talk with Taz. And not Taz, he's not on here, but other <laughs> athletes. I wonder if he was. I got to check now. But no, there's so many people. There's so many people on there. But Sabu, it's been an honor and a privilege, and hopefully you go to the Hall of Fame when you're alive, not when you're dead, So, because you, you've earned it. But thank you for being here in Tank Out. I'm Seafall. He's Sabu. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.